Hello, this is the example for worksheet A. This is the t-test for two independent sample means. Um, here's the question down here. To save time, I'm not going to read the question. You can read it yourself, but I want to just point out that there's links to the data, uh, either an Excel sheet or plain text. Um, either either one, just download it and, and do your calculations. Um, and uh, I, I just went to lock five stats. Um, I, I copied and pasted the data. Let me just go through here. Here's the results right here. So here's the histograms of the two groups. The experimental group uh, is on top. It's a it's a unimodal symmetric curve, um, and also the uh, control group. It's uh, it's not quite unimodal symmetric, but it's it's fairly close. There's a little bit of a gap, but other otherwise it's you can see it's fairly fairly normal looking. Um, and then the summary statistics are here on the on the right. Um, the control group. Sample size, mean, et cetera, experimental group, sample size, mean, standard deviation. Um, one thing I want to point out, if you decide to use lock 5 stat, um, click on where it says descriptive statistics for one quantitative and one categorical variable. And then if you copy and paste the data when you when you go to edit data, let me just show you what you have to do. You have to do some rearranging uh, because the only way lock 5 stats will accept the data is, is you have um, each row. For each individual, you have to say whether they're in the control group or the experimental group, and then what the value was, and then control value, control value. This is called stack data, and then the second group is down here. It starts, it says experimental, and then the value, experimental value, and so forth. And then if you do that, and and then you click um, histogram, it will do these calculations for you. If you find that complicated, you can also get your um, your statistics by just using Excel or by just uh, calculating um, the normal uh, one variable uh, lock five stats. E either way works fine. But anyways, um, here's the here's the worksheet right here. Um, here's the the summary right there. Um, now the first thing we should do is decide what will be uh, group one and what's group two. So I think I'll just have group one be the control group. It's completely arbitrary how you label this, but I'll just have group one be the control group. Group two will be the experimental group. So then N1 is the sample size, 27. Uh, X bar one is the, the mean of the first group. Let's write that here, X bar one. And then the standard deviation of the control group would be S1. And then, um, the experimental group is group two, so N2 sample size, X bar two would be the experimental group mean, and then um, S2 right there. Uh, now, by looking at the data, it does look like the experimental group is uh, higher than the control group, uh, at least from the samples. And so that's evidence that the experimental group, uh, their cholesterol did reduce more than the control group did. All right. But the question is, is this evidence at the 5% level of significance that the medicine is effective in reducing LDL cholesterol compared to the control group? So effective is implying, in this case, it does a, does a better job. In other words, the reductions are, are greater. And so uh, for the null, now for step one, null and alternate, the null is, uh, the null is just mu1 is the same as mu2. That, the, the mean of millions and millions of people who take this medicine um, is the same. The cholesterol level is the same for millions and millions of people who don't take the medicine. So mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Now the alternate, um, we're hoping this medicine is effective. So we're hoping the ex ex people taking the, the medicine has greater reductions. So I'm hoping that group two has a higher number. So that would mean mu1 minus mu2 in this case, we're hoping to be less than zero. Whatever you suspect or whatever you're hoping for, that's your alternate hypothesis. In this case, mu2, we're hoping to be the greater number, so mu1 minus mu2 would be a negative number. Okay, so that's it for the for step one. Step two, uh, get the sample, collect the data. Okay, I, I got the data, I got the summary statistics right here. To, uh, I just did that in advance to save some time. Um, uh, but is the sample random? Well, let's go back to the text of the question. Um, it says here that they were randomly assigned uh, to the two groups. 
So that's that's good. Now the the subjects themselves may not have been randomly selected, but at least they've they've been randomly assigned. So I'll I'll go ahead and say, um, for the sample random, I'll say at least there's random assignment to the two groups. All right. Um, now, is the sampling distribution a t distribution? So is, if n is more than 30, well n is not, and it, well n is 30 with one group, it's almost 30 for the other group. So we have some leeway here. Let's take a look at the histograms. Um, I, I made the histograms in advance also, unlike five, oh, hold on here. Um, here's the histograms. You can see both histograms are unimodal and symmetric. Um, even if there's some skew, that's okay because it's close to 30, our, our sample sizes. So uh, it, it meets the conditions. Let's go back here. So we'll, we'll say for this part, we'll say yes, right here. All right, now, um, are the samples independent of each other? Um, yes, we'll say yes to that as well because it's two completely different groups. They're not uh, brothers or sisters or something like that uh, of each other. They're just two s totally separate groups and they were randomly assigned. So, so yes, they're independent of each other. So now we can calculate the sample means. And so we have here, um, here's our formula right here. So T, let's put this over here. T is, all right, so T, okay, so T is X bar one minus X bar two uh, minus zero divided by square root, I'm just, I'm just recopying the formula right here, divided by square root S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. Okay, so plug, plug in all the numbers here. X bar one is 18.074 minus uh, X bar two, 23.800 divided by square root S bar, S1 squared is, the standard deviation of the first group, 4.057 squared over N1, which is 27, plus standard deviation squared of the second group, 4.278 squared. Uh, let's make our square root sign bigger. Divided by the sample size of the second group, which is 30. All right. Uh, and then this equals, scroll down a little more here. Uh, negative 5.726 on top. I'm, I'm happy to see a negative because the second uh, sample mean is, is larger and I had a negative for my alternate. So that's that's a, that's that's uh, promising. Now the bottom, I calculated that in advance just to save some time. The standard error is 1.104. Now when you um, divide that, you get negative about um, five point something. It's about five, negative 5.187. All right, that's the T value. Now that's a really big T value. Um, almost for sure we will be rejecting that null hypothesis. Um, it's highly unlikely. If the null is true, quick side comment here. If the null is true, if the means of the populations were truly the same, then it's highly, highly unlikely to get two sample means that are more than five standard errors apart from each other. That, that's what the T is, is telling you right there. All right, we're ready to move on to step three. Now, find the p-value. All right, so for the p-value, um, first we need the degrees of freedom. Um, degrees of freedom is, is a, it's a complicated formula. It depends on the standard deviations and the sample sizes of both groups. Uh, uh, there's a website here that, um, under course resources, um, back to, uh, here we go. Uh, under uh, under uh, course resources, it says degrees of freedom calculator, right there, degrees of freedom calculator. Um, this will calculate the degrees of freedom for you. And so just type in your numbers. N1, it was, uh, what was it, it was 27. Okay, N2 was 30. Uh, standard deviation of one, let's take a look. What was it there? 4.057. So type that in 4.057. And then standard deviation of group two 
was 4.278. Four point two seven eight. All right, and compute degrees of freedom. Fifty four point eight three eight five. We can round that to fifty five. All right, so fifty five degrees of freedom. Okay, so the p value. Um, uh, use technology when you can. So let's let's go to our. Um, if, if using Excel, you can use the tdist command. Um, I will go to. Uh, back to our our um, our course resources, we have our normal and t-distribution calculator, and uh, here it comes. Okay, so we have here click t-distribution with 55 degrees of freedom, and then um, we're looking for probability less than because we have a less than back to the alternate hypothesis here. The alternate hypothesis has a less than right there. And by the way, our T is negative. So that, that's consistent with each other. And so um, we want to know the probability that X is less than, or T is less than. In this case, it was a 5.187, excuse me, negative. Negative 5.187. All right, and click Calculate. And then um, if you scroll down, it draws a picture for you. The now here's the t distribution. Negative five is way, way down there. It's it's pretty much the area is zero. It's actually point zero 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 two. One, two, three, four, five, five zeros, and then a two. An extremely small p value, meaning nearly impossible to get two stand two sample means five standard errors apart from each other. So P dot oops. Okay, so okay, so P value is point zero 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 two. I believe it was five zeros. Okay, uh now step four, make a conclusion. P value it certainly is less than 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis. Um, so we can conclude that the medicine was effective. That's that that it actually um, the population now if, if this medicine was, was put on the market and millions of people took this medicine on average their cholesterol level would get reduced more than people who who took a placebo so medicine was or let's say is medicine is effective at reducing cholesterol level. cholesterol levels. Okay, that's it.